Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Jabe's against the machine. Is that how you're going to start every show now? I don't think I've ever started with that, have you I? You keep, we start with Jabe. Well, I, w- you, I always feel like. Are you trying to like get my attention? Yeah, I always feel like you're oh, okay. surprised by the start of another show. Okay. I, I always feel like that's a, that's a shock for you. Yeah. Where you're just like, oh, fuck. It's, we, we're doing this again. Yeah. Yeah. Still. <laughs> Look, I told you last show, those sponsors pay for this whole thing, you know? So Oh, absolutely. They keep paying for it. We'll keep putting them out. We'll keep chunking them out in the world. Basically. We'll keep crowning them out into the world. Yeah, just let the skull peek through, you know? <sighs> let your love light shine in. It's not even a real song no. anymore. I feel real good today. Real good. Quick update for the... Uh, Folks at home, as everybody uh, has been asking about the Georgia artisan thing, what happened for the hashtag tables for Jables? Tables for Jables. I don't know who started I love. that hashtag, but it was amazing. Um, <laughs> people hit them up religiously, drove their Google reviews down to like 1.2, and then they wrote in, like, they got it cleared up. You know, they were like, oh, this is some asshole or whatever. It was right. Like, that, no. I, that I wanted to sleep in his driveway. And, yeah. and I'm yeah. like, no, man, this is actually what happened. You told me I was a loser and not good enough. Right. For your time and that, you know, you had to skip me as sacrifice, as a tribute. Mm-hmm. If you're watching the video show, I just gave you a nice Hunger Games symbol as tribute to, you know. Get the other fucking people their deliveries on time. Mm-hmm. Congratulations for them. I'm sure they're happen to ha- having the happiest Mother's Days of their lives. Yeah, they're having their tables. They're sitting there with breakfast made probably by their family. Happy Mother's Day, Jibs. <laughs> but everybody Look, keeps I'm going. Fine. I have a table. Everybody you know? keeps going to their Instagram and all this shit. It's really funny. Of like, oh, that's a that's a whatever their piece is they're showing on Georgia Artists, and they're like, oh, that's beautiful. I wonder if uh, you know what would look beautiful is if St. James is sleeping on it. There is there is a guy that's like leading the crusade. <laughs> it's one guy, right? I'm gonna have to shout him out. You're gonna have to. Yeah, we'll, we'll give him a shout out. But that's M D. TK. NDTK. Oh, yeah. Right, Mike Donahue. Oh, Mike Donahue. Yeah. Or Donna, Donahoe, I believe. It's two O's on the end of that. I believe. Yeah. So would that be yeah. who? He's, dude, Mike is a long time. He's first time, long time. Like, he's, he's okay. been with us. He's been a day one homie of Drinking Bros podcast, Ross Patterson Revolution Yeah. Podcast. That name sounds really familiar. And, yeah. um, I mean, he is hammering them they have i'm sure blocked him at this point because they've deleted all the messages but i get them because i'm tagged in them so it's just like he is he was the one that sent that picture wasn't it of somebody sleeping in the and then yeah 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 yeah, and was like hey georgia artisan the hilarious thing real footage no it was like real footage of a georgia artisan delivery guy and it's a guy sleeping in a driveway just sleeping in a driveway it's beautiful it's really fucking funny thank Um, you for your support mike yeah yeah because the the funny thing is it's like dude we really have 1.6 million on this one the other show drinking bros is 5.2 million listeners if i went on there and went ham against georgia artisan oh boy it it would be my thing with that over with i really feel like we you do need to pick and choose your you do, absolutely because, uh, your battles because many times, I mean, I probably have two or three conversations a day that I would like to be like, Hey, I'm just going to say your company's name yeah, um, and say what you did and what you said. And then we can <laughs> kind of just go from there. But you know, you can't, right? Yeah. You can't keep doing that. But no, I really you know, you feel can't. like there is Absolutely. There was certain there's things. big ticket items where you're just like, hey, cool. And we'll go over what they are in this life because another one popped up yesterday. But this, like, I, I can't say go, go fucking bulls on parade on this. Like, I can't, I can't do that. Right. Because, you know, again, and even if this guy was like, all that stuff happened and he was like, let me deliver it to you personally 
like I did the first time, how can I make this right? Yeah. We wouldn't have said shit. Totally. Do you know man. what I'm saying? So it's like not only that, but we, we, we let usually things give go to a point. We usually give people can. a shout out on the show, and they do great work. And it's because uh, it, look, it's it is important to, to support small businesses and local businesses. Yeah, we do it all the time. Yeah, um, you know, we do it all the time with uh, Wilmington Brewery here. Like I, every time I go there, and it's you, fucking fantastic. There's another place, uh, Whiskey Creek, um, yeah. that we go to for dinner with the kids. I've never had a bad meal there. I ran into Ever. the owner at a party. And I was like, hey, man, because somebody was like, oh, hey, you own it? Whiskey Creek. And I was like, oh, shit. I went out of my way to go across the party and be like, dude, you own Whiskey Creek? Right. I love the food. I've never had a bad meal there. And I've eaten there 100 times now at this point. Yeah. Um, so, again, I, I love small businesses. That's how America is built. It's um, the Guy Fieri model. Okay. Yes. And that's why we love him so much. Yes. Is he just gives free prep. He makes sure the place is good. Believe me, he mm -hmm. did it here. He did it here. And he Guy cut Fieri out. Guy was here. He yeah. cut out a couple places that actually the owner I ended up being an <laughs> asshole and like enough people wrote in that he was like, all right. I'm is that what happened? Yeah. Well, that I'm sure it will happen. So he goes, he gets the best yeah. of everything they have. You know what I mean? They yeah. put on the best show. They've got their best people in, but other people will let you know. You know, people will write into him and let him know, like, this actually, you know, on a daily basis, this isn't actually a this great place. This place sucks. Right? Yeah. And so he'll cut things out. He goes and he films, as I found out from them, him filming here, he'll go and he'll film, like, five or six places. Uh -huh. And then you either make the cut or you don't. Sure. You know what I mean? So Fork and Cork here made the cut. Yeah. I think on love a daily court, basis, the they are consistently awesome. Right? Yeah, I love and Fork and And then there's court. a couple places that, that have great food, but gosh, they just can't get it together on a like consistent basis, right? Yeah. So like we said, Whiskey Creek, it's like we've been there enough times to say without any hesitation that they do the best job every day between like uh, staff, food. I mean, we always, we never wait for longer than, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's always, always good. Always good. Always yeah. good. Well, Wilmington Brewery is always like, always good. They put out new beers every, never had a and bad the reason beer. why I say this, they put out new beers every single Friday. Never had a bad can out of that place. Like ever. Um, I don't know how they do it. Okay. Cause I mean, I don't even know how you can afford to make new beers every Friday and then can them. Right. That's crazy. I, I mean, cause you have the tried and true no. that everybody else does. Right. Uh, all these craft breweries have, and uh, it's but usually it's one. It's just I like, oh, we have one, and it's this is what we can, and this is what but goes don't out to they the public. Sell out every Friday, every Friday, so that's how they have, it. yeah. And I, I <laughs> so follow, it's like they I follow their Instagram too because I'm just yeah. like, I'm like worried I'm gonna miss what the new one is, and I'm like, ooh, I need that. Um, I don't, I, I don't know how they do it, but they do. Uh, big fan of those guys, but you know. It goes from small companies all the way up to big companies, too. Uh, StubHub was the, the one. And when you're going up against these powerhouses like, yeah, like this, I, you can't even say fuck StubHub or like Amazon. No. With Amazon, with all the shit that happened with my book, you can't, I can't say, no, never buy from Amazon. You can't because you don't have a choice, right? Yeah. 90% of book sales come from Amazon. Same with Matt's book. A lot of people hit me up and they were like, hey, is, are you going to run into the same problems? I was like, no, this one's a military biography. Like, the, the hell that they would catch on a national basis for pulling a military biography would be right. way, way too strong. And I was like, you're fine. You can, you can order off of Amazon. It's gone through enough people, I think, at this point. You know, DOD, pub, Yeah, whatever, Department wise, of Defense, where, CIA. Even the CIA cleared it. So, yeah, know, we're fine. So, if it's a, enough, good enough for the Penguin CIA. <laughs> and the CIA, I guess Amazon can let it through. Can do it. I, uh, my experience last night was with StubHub. Where, you know, we, we do these sports shows on Drinking Bro Sports. We go to all, a, a lot of the events, right? And usually our sponsors give us tickets or whatever. But sometimes it's hit and miss. We're just like, ah, these are the best seats in my life. Or they're like, man, this could be a little better. It's like or Could be a little if better. If you're looking for a deal, sometimes it really works out. And sometimes it's just okay. But most, you know, but well, whatever. From the, from the sponsors, like, look, we're always grateful for the tickets. And that's great. Um. For the sports show. Again, when we want to, to upgrade, we'll go to like StubHub, right? Because uh, you're kind of stuck with that now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, StubHub or eBay. There's some other ones like Vivid Seats and things like that, but their fees are ridiculous. StubHub's fees are ridiculous. And, and again, this is really creepy. Um, 
because I, I talked about this on another show, and I don't know whose it was, or maybe I was a guest on somebody's show. I was like, it's kind of creepy how they follow you. So like StubHub, like I, I was looking at purchasing tickets, and I got a, like a personal email from like a worker there who was just like, hey, this is Rodrigo. I noticed you were looking to buy those tickets and blah, 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 and uh, you didn't get them. Can I help you assist you with a deal? And I was like, are You're you like, going how to did give you me know? a better deal? Well, yeah. I mean, look, we're all being tracked. And that's with everything we do in life. I have a funny story. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine with it. So it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> but Rodrigo should not know who I am or my purchasing habits, nor should he hit me up five minutes after I look at tickets on StubHub. And he was like, still thinking about getting those tickets? And I was like, I just wrote him back. I was like, Y'all going to give me a deal or what, what's the, right. what's the story here? Um, because let's face it, they're not giving me a deal. It was the same with the Super Bowl last year. We got Super Bowl tickets, but I was looking to get some for, uh, mom and dad mm-hmm. for the birthday and, and whatever. And mm-hmm. I was just kind of price shopping and they were like, Hey, you just still thinking about those Super Bowl tickets? Right. And I, I was like, no, it was like Sharon or something. I was like, yeah, Sharon, you're going to give me a deal? No, but we can offer you unbelievable protection because you don't want to buy these anywhere else without getting protection. I was like, what kind of protection? Because with the fees that you're charging on these tickets, because you look at it and it's the same as flowers, right? You buy these flowers and you're like, oh, $39.99, no bigs. Check out $79 for flowers. With the tickets, same thing. You're like, oh, tickets are 100 bucks. Check out. Tickets are $325 a piece. Right. And you're like, motherfucker, what are these fees? So I hit her back and she was like, I was like, the protection you're going to give me, like I could get armed guards to show up at whoever house I buy. I buy these off of Craigslist or whatever and personally insist me with real protection into their motherfucking living rooms and getting my tickets. So unless you're going to do that, right. Then we're, it's a no go here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, don't, don't try to sell me shit. Mm. Um, so obviously with that email, I know these tickets are going to go down. Cause it's like, Hey, yeah. Can we help you buy these at the highest price? Now? Point you possibly yeah, exactly. get? And I'm like, eh, you know, cause there's a couple things that I'm, I'm going to, uh, sports wise in the upcoming weeks. Um, One's kind of like a you know old school college trip and things like that. And it's mm-hmm. just like, eh, you know, let's upgrade. Let's get into the front row, that type of thing. And uh, Rodrigo's not going to help me out with that. And again, I can't say stub, fuck StubHub because I, you, you're kind of stuck with them. And that's it. I, did, I do find it fascinating, though. We had a ticket guy on Benny, my, my boy Benny, um, who does a lot of our stuff for us. And uh, uh, Benny Daniels. And he was just like, hey, man. They're, they're, it's a monopoly and they hold back like 40% of the tickets from Ticketmaster. And I was like, I knew it, you know, because now they have that Ticketmaster now. Want to buy them in the aftermarket? And it was like, wait, you guys own both of these. What's to stop you from not selling these tickets at 10 a.m.? That's what right. it is. So they're holding all this shit back. Right. Uh, what's your crazy story? Oh, it's not a crazy story. It was just funny. I was like, I needed something, I think a baby gate. And I was looking on my Instagram and there was, I was like, Looking on your Instagram for a baby gate? I was just looking on Instagram and I was thinking I need a baby gate. And so I was like. You didn't type it in anything? No, but I said it out loud a couple of times. <laughs> like at my phone and I was like by myself. But I was like, yeah, I could really use a baby gate. I think I need a baby gate. And just kind of hoping that. Did it? No. But oh. that's why I want it to listen to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want Because I want to be able to say. Hey, I'm kind of, it'd be cool. Like I'm, I kind of need a baby gate for bottom of the stairs. Sure. Is there something like that? And then have it pop up. Well, that's what I would like. Look, Google, you know, Google just got popped for it. They're listening to everything they've got. You know, we talked about Alexa getting popped for it and all that stuff. And it's like the crazier and crazier all this shit gets. Um, Then you're going to have what happened yesterday with the, with the Tesla thing. Because when everything is, hey, self-driving, we listen to your voice, everything's autonomous, and it's, you can just kind of do whatever you want and then just expect like everybody's listening and say, fuck it. There was a couple that filmed themselves having sex in a Tesla driving down the highway. Tesla self-drives itself. Right. They were like, this is dangerous. They were boning in the car and they mm-hmm. filmed it. It was like, huh? It's a self-driving vehicle. I'm surprised it didn't happen faster. Yeah. I kind of just assume. By that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I saw that story. I was like, meh. 
<laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Just kind of passed through that one. But um, <laughs> why'd so you bring us through that one? They filmed themselves. Yeah, they filmed themselves fucking in the car. It wasn't like there's not cameras and stuff in the Tesla anyway. No. Uh, outward facing. Oh, okay. I'm sure they're inward as well. Let's face it. But um, outward facing. So what they did was they looked like a GoPro. They had straps in there and they just, you know, It didn't boned. really do it for me. The, oh, you the watched ang- the video? I was, yeah, like the angles and stuff. It just didn't really do it. Well, look, it's it's hard to maneuver in a car anyway, sexually. Yeah. It- You're not going to get a, a great DP. You're like bang bus. That's even then, you know, like bang bus, right? That's just a room. It's just a on b- wheels. That's all it is. Do you is. know what I mean? Yeah. Even then, the camera angles aren't great. Yeah. Because it's like, all right, somebody's got to be driving, and then you know the passenger guy's got to be filming. But you really can't get get underneath there where you need to. You know. Right. You're not going to get a sweet underneath gerbil catwalk, you mm-hmm. know, type of bone stitch on yeah. that. Um, you know, and this is just speaking as as me being a director, like mm-hmm. just. It's hard to get those angles in there, you know? Yeah. You're going to see and cameras. Believe and believe me, I love an amateur yeah. porn. It's a go-to. Every, every, everybody does. But this one was just too amateur for me. Yeah. Didn't do it. Well, it's the first, you know? I, like, this guy was the Neil Armstrong of boning in a Tesla. Sure. He's the first one to do it. So I, Not I, the first one to do it, but definitely the first one to film. I give it a t- yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I give it a tip of my, tip of my cap. Tip I give him a nice tip of the cap. Uh, to the up, up, up. Yep. Um, to him, you know, for sure. being the first at something. I don't know if Guinness is going to recognize it the way they should, but I would like to see a some form of, of recognition from Guinness World Records. Right. You know, first one a bone in a Tesla. I told you the trick with that, right? With what? Um, with the Tesla, because you have to touch the wheel like every yeah. minute and a half or two minutes to make I sure you're it alive from or you're Josh, awake. Josh, I think. Yeah, so you, what you, what do you, because Josh has one, our, our buddy has one. Yeah. Uh, he's got the dope one too, the, the SUV one where it's just like. That, the it, whitest leather inside. It is, Cannot stain it. It is the future. White. I, got, I can't, I can't oh, really put into words how great that car is. Really great. Um, anyways, he put an ankle, an ankle weight on the steering wheel. Yeah. And that beat the system. So it was just like, all right, they clearly had something on there. And it was just like, all right, cool. Um, We're They boning. didn't. They said that they kept bumping it. And taking it out of autopilot, which really? made it more dangerous. Ah. So she kept bumping it and it would like slow way down or like swerve a little bit. So okay. Huh? That, and that added like a, a fun a thing. A little fun like, yeah. element. Threw a little it. wrinkle wrinkle in there. Mm-hmm. Ah, you hate that Gosh, word. In the, front, in the front seat with the steering wheel. It's just sort of like Oof. not a great position. No. For anyone all the way around. Uh-uh. You got to go all the way back, you know, put that seat all the way back. All and the way back. Passenger seat. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's tough. It's a, it's a tough angle. Tough you need an SUV. Yeah. You need an SUV. I had, a, I had a Ford Tempo in high school. So you need a, you need a big I had a, SUV. I had a, uh, a Volkswagen Cabriolet. So, no. <laughs> hello. Yeah. <laughs> I bet the top was permanently down too, wasn't it? Permanently down. Did you and ever put it up in high school? Cow seats. Oh, you got cow and seats. Dice. There it is. So I had the whole thing. You had it all tricked The out. whole vibe. Yeah. Everything that you picture is what I had. You were that girl. Do you know girl. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You were yeah. that, that bish. Yeah, I was that bish. Yeah. Wash dish, bish. <laughs> you better wash dish. Girl, you better wash your face. You better wash dish, bish. If that girl beats me again, I'm going to be pissed off about it. Actually, I beat her. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, the, girl, the girl wash your face. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay. I beat her on Barnes & Noble, so... Man, yeah. she's cranking. She put out another book. Yeah. Cranking them out. Now she's just got a team of people. Like, Oh. It's great. She maybe always did, but yeah. Eh. Good for her. One of those, I didn't graduate high school, but I found money somewhere. All those. Uh, telling you how to live your life. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all those people, all those big authors do that now. Um, oh, yeah. Who's the, uh, fuck. Patterson guy. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, how do I not know that guy's name? Something. James. Uh, I think it's James Patterson. Sorry. Reginald. Yeah, nope. Reginald nope. Patterson. No, definitely isn't Reggie Patterson. Um, Reggie Patterson. Reg. He makes those murder books, right? James, James Patterson. Reggie um, Patterson. He's, like, his son writes them, and they've got a team and the whole mm-hmm. thing, and they just keep cranking those things out. I mean, it is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. The two that I know who crank out at a, at a high rate like that, that are doing it themselves, is, uh, was, I don't know if they're still doing it like that. John Grisham was doing it by himself, mm-hmm. and then uh, Nicholas Sparks. Um, and I read a crazy article on him where he was like hanging upside down 
uh, sleeps upside down, doesn't, you know, sleep more than five hours a night, that type of dude. Who sleeps upside down? Uh, the Nicholas Sparks. He doesn't sleep upside down. Yeah. You cannot sleep upside down, you yeah. fucking idiot. Yeah, he was hanging himself from the, like the doorway thing. Very Batman-ish. He had some type of device or contraption. He was sleeping in for like an hour or something like that. Something crazy. Uh, I, we had a, I had a nurse come and, and draw blood for me for a uh, life insurance policy. Mm-hmm. And she was like, she saw my books up at the house. And she, and, uh, she was like, oh, you're an author? You're the second author I've, I've come to their house and drawn blood on. And I was like, oh, who's the other one? She's like, Nicholas Sparks. And I was like, oh, fuck off. I was like, what's that dude's whole story? Right. And she was like, he's weird, man. And I was like, oh, not surprising. But he lives, he's he's Wilmington guy as well. So you still live here? You know, he got divorced. So I don't know how that worked. Um, Probably married younger, you know? Right. Needed inspiration for the new book. I don't know if Wilmington is a divorced guy type of place. Do you know what I mean? Is Uh, it? I heard it's really hard to be single here. Just saying. For, I think for ladies it is. For, for divorced ladies, ladies it is. I think for guys it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but for ladies. Because <laughs> <laughs> a friend of ours was like, hey, I, I, you know, she, when she got divorced or whatever and she lived in that, that condos and she was like, it's all divorcees. And it was across yeah. the street from like. Uh, like this gated community where, yes. like, you know, rich old doctors yes. live and you're like, oh, yes. it makes total sense. You're just moving right across the street into the to the smaller <laughs> living quarters and then the younger one moves into the house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. For dudes hard, are great. Yeah, for dudes, it's like college town, Oof. downtown. And I posted that article on Facebook yesterday on our Ross Patterson Revolution Facebook page about uh, the rise of the daddy. Oh, God. Yeah, they had a picture of Johnny Slats on there, John Slattery from Mad Men. How funny. I leave you for someone older, and you leave me for someone younger. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Changing. It's changing. You're not old enough for me. Yeah. Sorry. Do you know what I mean? You're not old enough for me yet. I got to go 60s. 65 <sighs> years old. Perfect. A 55-year-old right now. You guys have the same sleep schedule. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be your dream actually that'd be my dream <laughs> early dinner dinner at 4 30 yeah right Bed. when it opens a fully rem by 8 p.m <laughs> do you know what i mean oh up at six a little coffee little run yeah. a little walk a little farmer's market man all of that sounds, dream sounds awful to me um yeah. But, you know, look. So we, well, we're on the rocks and we will <laughs> not last. Put in your applications now, daddies and baby girls, because you we don't want are that. on the rocks. You don't want that. You don't want it. No, no, no. Look, I, look, if, if baby girls start sending in photos, I can tell you, but they're not going to be glamour shots. You know what I'm saying? Right. Going to be a lot of pussy shots. Right. Oh, you got a plane? Because I got a landing strip for you. Not pictures, applications. Look, Mm -mm. it's a new world now. Mm -mm. There's no more resumes. You're not turning in resumes. You're you're looking at pussy shots. On the rocks. We will not last. (laughs) So, (laughs) But our sponsors will. Uh, (laughs) We got some sponsors. Everybody was stoked that we brought back the live reads and... uh, Look, we're trying to make we're going to try and make it fun for you guys. These are actual companies that we want you to support that Correct. we support that support Correct. us. Yes. And so we get it. Like yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah, get yeah, it yeah. still a commercial. We're going to try and make it good. And these are products that we actually like and use. So sorry for the old school lo- listeners, but we're going to we're going to pop it up. And, and I'll, you are in the show still. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's still show to be had again on the rock. Yeah, on the Not rocks. Not gonna last. No, me and you. No, like, what, what do you can't think? Can't last, eight, right? Eight more years, maybe. Oh, I would say eight total. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we're gonna we're gonna start with ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Um, I look, I knew, I, I knew when we signed up with this company and I got the mattress in the mail. I was like, man, th- this company is amazing, and I hope they stay for a very long time. Because sometimes. You know, it's it's hard, man. When when you get a a sponsor you might not like. Luckily, we love all our sponsors now. But I've had some in the past on Drinking Bros where I was just like, shit. Well, it's just we don't 
know them we don't know the product yeah they, you but know. but you know like it's, uh, things that are cheaper like i don't mind trying where it's just like all right cool and I'll, I'll give it a go right something that's expensive like a bed or a mattress like i wouldn't we would not do it at all it, because that's that's too big of a it's a too big of a big ticket item yeah it's like the goddamn table right from from george arson i wouldn't do that i don't want to steer people into yeah i don't want to steer people into that yeah. so we're we're actually doing a, a really big deal with them starting in June, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, again, I we have them in all the rooms in our houses. We have forever. The ghost pillows are amazing. Um, you know, I think majority, like fifty, almost fifty two percent of our audience is military first responder. Yeah, and they're doing fifteen percent off now forever with them, and it's uh, things like that where you're like, oh shit, that's how to give back. That's yeah. that's an amazing thing. So we're going to be doing big things with them. Go there. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. If you need a mattress or like 36 months, no interest, pay as you go program. Nobody offers shit like that, um, which is why we're amped to continue this re relationship for a, a very long time. And we'll have more on that in about three weeks. So I want to give them a shout out first and foremost, um, because uh, everybody who buys it, luckily, it's been that one product that like, dude, thank you. Changed my life. Uh, next up, we got blackriflecoffee.com. I'm grateful for them just because I wake up with them every morning. Every morning. Every morning they're in my cup. Uh, that's. And you that's fall asleep. I'm starting. You fall asleep talking to the boys every night, don't you? I do. FaceTime. Black Rifle Coffee guys, yeah. You're like, Matt, can you just stay with me till I fall asleep? Stay with me because you're gone. You know, you're, you're out. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. need some. I need somebody to say goodnight. You know? Right. I just need a, a, right. a voice in the future. It's a lot like. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think, in that the space movie. I'm just, I just need somebody. You know? The mailbox one? Nope, the space one. Gosh, the I magic, know you love the, the mailbox, mailbox one. Mailbox? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee. Yeah, Canal. Canal Reeves. He's back. John Wick Three. My boy. You boy. One of the best actors. Uh, or the worst. Of our, nope. Nope. Did you hear about the Point Break story? Which Point Break story? Well, obviously, I'm growing my hair out and. I, we got to get this fucking perm. This is getting crazy now. I looked you it on camera it. the other day. We're not doing anything, but you can do it. Yeah. Who is? We don't we, need to do anything. You. Yeah. Well, it's your friends. Like, let's, this is your friends who do this. You know what I'm saying? I can't do this. I can't, I can't do a home kit with a, with a, a body wave. And I was going to tell you, I can actually do it. Can you really? Oh, uh, but you didn't want to, you're like, dude, I got enough jobs. I'm done. Anyways, point break story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this out. There is a play right now where you walk in to see point break the play. They pick out a random person. This has been going on for years. I know. I, and I keep getting sent this over and over again. I want to give them a shout out and just say, hey, if you're out there and you want to play Keanu Reeves' character in a play in point break, go do this because that's incredible. That would be the funnest shit of all time. Yeah. Like I, if if Gosh, they've been doing it for how long? Ten years. Wherever we go, next time we go there, I want to go. I want to. I, I want to do it. Were they doing it in LA? LA still? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to do and it. And you will be Swayze. Well, they don't let you be Swayze. They so let they you be only Canal. pick Canal. Correct. Correct. And let's face it, with what I got going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want two Swayze's on stage. Sure. You don't want to upstage the Swayze. Yeah, but and also just know that the summer Swayze's coming and it'll be live on the show and we'll do it. Subscribe on YouTube for the video show. Uh, but Black Rifle, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Do it. Sign up for the subscription of the month. Next up, StrikeForceEnergy.com, James. <laughs> Blinkers. Yeah. Four amazing flavors, lemon, orange, orange, and make America grape again. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. Rest on your bar top or countertop. Seems boom, boom. Everybody's buying this. I get it. Uh, we love it. We have a pool party tonight, you and I. We're going to have to. Yeah, that's going straight into the vodka. Can't recommend that enough for the summer. No carbs or sugars. It goes right in that vodka. It's better, man. If you're on that, I feel like everybody past the age of 30 is, is vodka sodas. Have to. Sucks. Or wine. This is the only thing that's going to spice it up. Or a nice I, red wine. Yeah, otherwise you're getting, uh, you know, the bullshit of, of Red Bull, and it's just like, bro, I don't want to mm -mm. ro roll around with, like that all day. Mm -mm. It's too heavy. Strikeforceenergy.com. Go there. Subscription of the month. Kick the can. 
Revolution, 20% off at StrikeForceEnergy.com. Last but not least, StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Are you Rocky? Woo. Man, let freedom ring, James. That is I in my will. ears. I will. Somebody said they, it, they swerved in traffic this morning when they heard you. I don't want to kill people. Bust that out. Do you know I, I don't want to kill people. If somebody gets killed, they get killed. I think you no. need to know. No. no. I think you need no. to know about no. it. No. <laughs> um, it's like the Donald Glover performance at Coachella. Hey, look, guys. The, one of these people is going to be dead in two weeks. And yes. that's just a fact. Ooh. So enjoy tonight's show. And you're like, ooh, okay. Ooh, dark. I like it. I like it. It's true. Straightrazors.com is the premier product for shaving bushes. Shaving bushes. For men or women. Male, shaving your bushes. Male grooming. Do it. Men, men women. Smell spray, good. Pregnants. Be cleaned up. Yes. Smolder after Do shave. It. The best. Straight razors are amazing. Father's Day, just around a corner. We're skipping Mother's Day. We are, because yeah, look, we're gonna skip it. if your mom's pregnant, right. it would be good for her bush, but I, I don't know if she's pregnant, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but all together, we're just going to skip Mother's Day. Yeah, we're skipping Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all about the fathers out there. The real heroes? Yep. Yeah, they, yeah, look, yeah. You can't see it, because I'm not wearing a cape, but I should be. Mm-hmm. Not all heroes, Japes, mm-hmm. wear capes. Will not last on the rock. <laughs> Straightrazors.com Promo code revolution 20% off That's a big big savings there And as always you can get my books Night she cries while he rides his steed When darkness falls he doesn't catch it in the new one Thank you for my service uh, I wrote, a, wrote it about my beef fry Matt, Matt Bass That's a crazy fucking book by the way um, That thing holy shit When you get that good luck Because that's a true story um, I want to talk about Bezos going back to the moon Back? Yeah we have been back. We have been on the moon since 69. Oh, I was going to say, did he go? No. No, he she maybe he did. I would, it wouldn't surprise me if he's like, oh, hey, guys, I snuck already, up there and here's already, some video. Yeah, already did a test drive. Yeah, no bigs. Him mm-hmm. or Elon Musk, where it was just like, dude, we've been there for like weeks, man. Yeah. We um, like have timeshare up there. So he, he, he comes out and makes this, this announcement yesterday for this, you know, blue origin mm-hmm. uh, going back to the moon. Because P- Pence, uh, v- VP Pence, he wanted men back on the moon by 2024, and um, Bezos took it to heart and was just like, yeah, man, I think I, we're going to do it. He's like, I, this should be ready to rock, and we should be landing on the moon um, by then. And he also, man, I don't know who watched this yesterday, but I, like, I, popped, I, pop, I popped my head in to see what this was like. I mean, it is, this blue moon thing is fucking insane, man. Um, it looks like all the shit you thought were going to happen in the future. And then you're like, wait a minute, this is actually happening. I mean, now? It's gorgeous. It's very virgin. Yeah. Virgin Which and look, yeah. virgin is doing a, exactly. their own version of it as well. But uh, um, it's amazing. I, f- I found his quote interesting yesterday that he said, it's time to go back to the moon this time to stay. And, and w- what they're preparing these things for is like, you know, living there for multiple weeks. And then he had this city built. Did you see the city? It looked a lot like Interstellar, where he was like, look, we're going to be living there. We're going to be living on, on these planets, and it's going to be happening soon. And, like, you know, there's going to be wildlife, animals, and people going to be able to live. I, I, look, I totally think it's true, and it, and it will probably happen. I'm not sure if it's in our lifetime, because let's face right. it, I probably got another 20 left before I, before I kick off this earth. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be in my lifetime, but I, I think it's going to be in our children or our grandchildren's for sure. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I keep thinking about that I always go back to that's, that's scary for me with, with all of this shit is if you get one crack, because it's all glass, and it literally looks like you would see an interstellar. If you get one crack in that glass, everyone's dead, right? Yeah. So what's to stop? Like, because you, you see these school shootings and bullshit like this all the time with these fucking idiots. Um, What's to stop somebody from just saying, you know what? I'm just going to take a sledgehammer to this, this window and we're going to call it a day. And I know, look, they're going to build it so it's not. Mm-hmm. But somebody's going to be able to crack it. And then it's like, all right, cool. Then you're just going to wipe out an entire colony or wh- whoever's lived up there. Right. Just somebody's going to go crazy and be like, man, I'm living in space. I used to live on Earth on mm-hmm. a planet. Mm-mm. I'm just going to give this a good old cracksy doodle. Not gonna happen. And then every, because you, have you seen what happens when, like, if you're in space, 
and your your helmet gets cracked. Mm-mm. It it sucks your face. Your face caves in <sighs> from the pressure. Yeah, I mean, granted, you know, you'd be dead with probably you'd be dead within ten seconds. I, hopefully, more than that, less than that. <laughs> right? Ten seconds would be weird. Yeah, I hope <laughs> it's like half a second. Oof. No, I, I think it's I think it's like ten, and that's it. Your face still has to cave in and all that shit. You have to have time for that. I think it's quick enough. Yeah. That's what, that's what would freak me out. Luckily, I don't have to think about that because it's not going to happen in my lifetime. But that, that's, that would be my biggest fear of like, all right, cool, man. Again, with the school shooting thing, that's the worst thing you could ever fucking do, in my opinion. Like one, one of the worst things on this planet, you know, or touch kids or yes, whatever the fuck yes, it is. Yes. If you're willing to do that and you're just a complete fucking asshole or psycho, What's one person just living in space just going to wake up and be like, man, fuck this place? Yeah. Now, why would we move up there? I I think what they're alluding to is that the earth will run out of resources or, you know, things like that eventually. Or it gives people another option of, you know, hey, do you want to be here anymore? Do you want to go and live the luxurious life up in space? Or it could be like a Vegas. Vegas type sitch where it's like, hey, you want to fly there and stay for like a week? Because people have applied for patents yeah, on that, by the way. I could see that more than full on living there, yeah. Living because there's no reason to do that. If and you our be- resources will replenish in different ways. Yeah, I, look, if you believe, you know, in climate change and all that stuff, like everybody else does, eventually it'll happen. Yeah. And look, I'm not a, I'm not a climate change denier. So, uh, I, I think eventually it'll happen. Not now. I, I'm surprised probably 200, 300 years away. I think if we can create a city on the moon, we can find ways to replenish resources. That's what I think here. Yeah. That's what I think. So it just seems like, I guess maybe it'll happen, but to me it seems scary. Look, I don't. I don't see the point. I, w- I will say this: you're not spending this much money on this shit if you don't believe it's a possibility, right? Because look, a- Amazon's a company. But I think again, a luxury situation, you know, where mm-hmm. there's some pods up there that you can go and because this moon- pay this amount to go up there. And- Th- this moon landing thing's been in the works for three years. They said so. I, I mean, they, they said the first test fire could come as soon as this summer for that moon thing. I mean, not that Elon Musk hasn't been close with this, but, uh, you know, Israel tried to land, what was it, last month, month, month before that, mm-hmm. and they failed. The rocket crapped out, what was it, 50 yards from the moon, and then just crashed into it. China's already there. China's already there now, so, yeah. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be sweet to have a, a man on the moon again. I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to go back to a time when astronauts were cool as fuck. Yeah. Because that just stopped being a thing, and it was just like, man, that sucks. You want to talk about a sweet-ass job that you should be praised for? It's mm-hmm. an astronaut. Yeah. Um, but they're kind of, yeah, I just don't like the idea of just regular people going up there because they have enough money to do it. Well, look, if, if you can. I'm just, and you know what it is? I'm just not into space. I know, you hate space. You hate, uh, like, everything involved with aliens and planets and everything else. Museums, history, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> space. The things you like in this world are very limited. Yeah. Coffee, bravo, a good rem. A good rem, um, wine. Yep. Pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, a dinner, a little bit of food. Food, yeah, yeah. wine, Some coffee, rem sleep. <laughs> a reality, a fun reality tryst. For an hour, yeah, no for, longer no, than an no, hour. Definitely no longer than an hour. Any you know, movie that's, start to get, uh, that, that's no. two hours, you don't even turn on anymore. <laughs> no. You're like, nope, I I'm, mean, I'm good. reality can't wise, I can't go for more. I can't <laughs> watch more than an hour of reality. I, look, I, I have a tough time with that too. Where I'm just like, oof. It's like kind of fun and reality whatever shows. for a second. And then you sort of, I think we both get to the point where we're like, I can't. I can't really watch this anymore. I'm also I make it further. We're, than we're you. spoiled by Net- Netflix too, with the, you know no commercials and all that shit. Where it's just like, man, if I see a commercial anymore, and have to come back from the commercial and recap everything that happened before the yeah, commercial, yeah. that whole thing now is very the, antiquated. Yeah, the reality shows aren't airing on Netflix, obviously. No. So there's a still not on. yet. Ah, 
I don't know, man. I don't. I don't see you taking that that thrown away from Bravo. As I think, look, I think reality and live sports is pretty much the only thing that's propping up uh, cable these days. Yeah. Because you know, last night I was watching the hockey game, uh, Carolina Hurricanes, hometown team, in the Eastern Conference Finals, and you know, you, you want to watch it on the big screen. You want when you want to watch it live and all that other stuff. And uh, you're still, and I know Hulu is streaming live sports and all that stuff, but. Still watching commercials. Yeah. Still cutting the commercials. So, so why not just yeah. him? That's the that's the last frontier. If you can skip that, phew. like if you could just leave the ice on, like you know, like on the hockey game, you just show the conversations on the bench or whatever they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Like I'd be fine with that. Right. They started doing it in football on Fox where they split screen it, where they're showing what's going on in the field during timeouts, and then right. the other half is a commercial. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. I like that better than watching a full screen commercial, but. We've all become dicks about it in right. this world. Um, so, you know, speaking of dicks, uh, I, I read this crazy story about the penis extensions. I didn't know that was a thing, like a real thing in this world that you could do. I didn't either. Is it real? It is. 30 to 40 grand for these penis extensions. And th- there was a, a warning that came out about it yesterday from, you know, some medical board saying, don't do this. This is super dangerous. No shit. No How shit. so? How is it dangerous, though? Any man with a dick and balls in this life will tell you, you can't just throw another three inches on there. Right. And everything's going to be sweet. Yeah. Like, it's things not. Things are going to die. Nerves are going to. Th- all, all of it. Things are going to get crossed. That's the thing. Is like, dude, you've got to go with the dick that, that, that someone gave you, you know, that your, your, your daddy gave you in this life. If you try to extend it and all that shit. Ew. Yeah. The dick your daddy gave you. If you try to, if you try to throw an extra trace on that, on that ding dong of yours, mm-hmm. it's gonna nerves, veins, all the surgery, all of it. All and of I was it. reading this article, and I was like, man, they were talking about the psychological factor of it too. And I was like, I guess, you know, I guess that's why, like, I, I won't get a V stack either. Like, I don't want a fucking blade down there. One false move, you know, a sneeze, a cough. <laughs> Right. Boom! Ah, you just sliced off half my dingling. I don't want that. I don't want. I, I like. You don't want to lose that feeling in there. You know. Mm-hmm. Same reason you don't cut off your big toe. You don't do that. It's more powerful than you think. You uh-huh. need that big toe in this life. Uh-huh. So, with if you're think if you're a man out there and you're like, man, I'm I'm like a fucking Asian boy down there, and it's you know, just an acorn and a pile of, of autumn leaves. Mm-hmm. Right, right in October, right when that fresh drop hits, and that's mm. your that's your package. You got to go with it, man. You got two options in this life with a dick that small: Sup- be super rich, or super good looking. Mm-hmm. And those are there's no in betweens there. Yeah, because if you're if you're not good looking and you have a small ding dong, got to go for so that rough. cash, homie. Yep. Straight cash. You got to yep. make that cheddar. Stay in school. You know what stay, I mean. Stay in school. You know. Definitely. They're, 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 they should add that to like as a guidance counselor. Like Let me see what you're part of the curriculum. Yeah. Like, hey, go to the school nurse. We're going to measure you out. And then if you're under, you know, we're going to talk about two, if you're under two inches flaccid. Forward. Yeah. We're going to talk about your life plans and expectancy moving forward. What do you want out of this life? It'll probably be in tech. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're going to have to step up your grades or whatever. The emo shit's not going to do it. Mm-hmm. You can go ahead and pull that pull out that bone that's drilled through your nose uh, cause you're going to have to get a real job, Holmes. Yep. With that small dick. Can't be working at, uh, forever 21 yep. or, uh, or hot, hot topic. topic. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Bramo on the rock. You can't be working laugh. at hot topic, you know, as a 29 year old emo with a small dick and expect mm-hmm. your life to be sweet. Mm-hmm. You, you can't, can't be riding a bike. Yeah. To your hot topic job. Yeah. Riding a fixie. Okay. Uh, Some of the biggest hammers I've seen in this life are like construction dudes and shit like that. People are like, fuck this, man. I got a huge dick in this life. Like, I'll do whatever I want. Totally. I don't need to go to college. You can take your college and stuff it up your ass. Yeah. I'm not paying these student debts. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I got a a hammer in this life. Yeah. I got a hog father in this life. Right. You know? Yeah. I got a I got a baguette. Yeah. And then if, you know, you like you take a guy like David Spade, right? He's Mm -hmm. not only is he rich, but he's got a fucking hammer on him. So if you're wondering like why he's like 60 and still pulling ass, like 23 year old ass, but he's got two of three, mm-hmm. you know, two of three, oh, okay. rich yeah, and yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, rich and big dick. Mm-hmm. He's missing good looking, but he's got two of three. 
in this world. And funny. So that's it's like funny. A, that's an extra that's bonus. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. But if you're out there thinking about getting a penile extension, don't do it, man. 30 to 40 grand for that. Science isn't there yet. No. Do you know what I'm saying? Let's where, wait. where are they pulling that skin for them? Because it's going to be different is colors. A, is it a transplant? I don't know. Like, you does know, somebody die and they're like, guys? oh, man, we got to take a dead guy's. Then you got or a dead man's really, cock. Like I said, are they, you know, is it on the back of rats? You know what I mean? Are you growing it on the back of rats? Like no. that ear. Oh, they grow the man. ears yeah, on the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is it like that kind of thing? Is it Petri dish? Is it 3D printer? How are we? What is it? I don't know. I'm sure there's a way to find out. Because I, can, I, I can tell you this. I don't have the time. I can tell you this. If you're a guy out there who's cert, you know, and look, most of us are cert in this life, cert, you know, cert de soleil. Um, you get a nice circumcision on there. It's a different color than the rest of your dick. It's the like what? A, the, the cirque, where you get cirked as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you get a when you get a boner, it's pink. Like that that little that inch long cirque is is pink, and then the rest of your dick's another color. Right. right now right. you're adding a third color to that that dong, and right. it's like you're starting to get into you know map of France territory where it's just three solid colors, and mm-hmm. that's weird. That's a weird fucking thing to deal with. Right. So I wouldn't do it, man. Again, start at an early age. 10th grade, recognize who you are, the man you're going to be growing, going forward, and then uh, sit down with your people, your advisors, and say, hey, man, I got a fucking small dick. What am I going to do? Right. If you're good looking, they're probably going to tell you to move on, keep on doing what you're doing, you're fine. Mm-hmm. If you're not, and then tell you to step up that bank game, son. Right. Go for the bag. Only, the only emoji you need is the fucking money bag. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that's going to do it in this life. Eggplant's not going to be. No. Egg, You're not egg, going to be sending an eggplant. You send that you eggplant be, emoji to, to somebody. It'll oh, be the after, flying money one. Yeah, yeah. After the you up text at 2 a.m., mm-hmm. she comes over to your house and sees, and sees that head wig in the, in the angry inch. Mm-hmm. She's going to bounce out of there like fucking Tigger, bro. Unless it's a mansion. Yeah. Unless, she, unless she's and going to the mansion. Stay. Then she'll, she'll stay, stay and put up with it. Stay. Yeah. When you. Clap your hands for that butler to come up. Mm-hmm. Some buttermilk for either just drinking pleasure or sexual pleasures. Her attitude is going to be chipper as fuck. She's going to perk right up. And you'll be fine in this life, you know? Sure. Scrooge McDucker, she's good. I get it. I get it. <laughs> do, do you? I am getting it. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Chris D'Elia rant right now. Mm-hmm. Speaking of him, uh, I, dude, how about the Eminem song? Is that crazy? It's crazy, but I kind of love it. I love it. I think it's awesome. I think it was a, a really funny move by Eminem. And if you haven't heard the song, it just came out a couple of days ago. So it's Logic and Eminem who are like the fastest rappers alive pretty much. I would say maybe throw in uh, Royce the Ruler, 5'9 Royce. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the fastest. Mystical used to be, but I think he's in jail. Uh, and I love some mystical. Danger! Watch yourself. Danger! Don't worry about your He keeps he keeps stealing people and then raping them though. Like he's, fastest one though. Yeah. If you're fast, you can steal a person, rape and then them, then get out. Yeah. Boom bang boom. He's been out of t- two of those now, in and out of jail for like eight years apiece, like really long stretches, and he keeps coming back. Right. Um. They they so him and and Logic put out a song. Uh. It's Logic featuring Eminem, e- even though only. Both of them are only doing one verse. Right. And then at the end of it, it was Chris D'Elia's Instagram rant about Eminem songs. You pants, you pimp, you pampkin or nampkins, champstick, all over the floor born, divorce and Harris and Ford. Like I, because I caught that video the day he put it out and I, I died laughing and I was like, oh my God, this is so funny. I watched it like five fucking times because it was a weird day for me. Right. And it was one of those things where like that, that's. This is what I follow people for on Instagram because it just made me laugh. And, you know, uh, chippered my day up. His Instagram Chris is D'Elia. really Instagram's good. His Instagram is great. Yeah. And uh, I was like, man, this is hilarious. And I ended up going viral. Uh, didn't think of anything about it. And then this Eminem song pops up. And the last 40 seconds is that my pampkins don't stand up. I'm cramping a pampkin. You know, I should put it at the end of this episode. You should. Um, I'll put the audio of Chris D'Elia really, really funny, in yeah. his car just doing an Eminem rant. It's, great. it's really, really good. It's cool. And and it shows a good sense of humor by Eminem of like, hey. Yeah. You know what's why is it 
seems so weird that Eminem knows who Chris D'Elia is. Like, it's weird that I can't picture Eminem, like, listening to a, to podcast, a podcast or watching a Netflix special. Why is that? I, it's, it's, certain yeah. people that you can't picture doing normal things, right? Well, I tuned into Chris D'Elia's show to see if he would talk about it. Obviously, everybody and their mother, because the song was ended up number one overnight. It's a good song. It's called Homicide. I, I enjoy the song. Um, but I, I, I tuned into to his show to see what his whole sitch was on it. And, uh, and then him telling the story about how it happened and everything was really funny. And Eminem called his manager personally and requested it. And yeah. it's great. Like, I like when people are able to have a sense of humor about shit. I, I'm with you. I don't. I, I, I always Does have a hard time have, believing yeah. that fam- like super famous people like your shit or listen to your shit. Either that or that they know what's cool in like a very relatable level. So like in my mind, I'm like, he had to have people, right? So he has to have younger or people that are grounded and living real lives to tell him these things. Because for some reason, you feel like once you get to a certain level and you're isolated enough from real life, right. that it's how can you actually listen to a podcast in the same way, seek people out in the same way, have, have the same experience as me? I think comedy is comedy, right? And you're, especially when they're not making any comedic movies now, so you're, everybody's going to podcast. So I, or stand up. Right. Stand ups have become a big thing on net on Netflix. Does Eminem know that? Yes. Why does Eminem have to like uh, here's my theory on this. With with Chris D'Elia in particular. Right. They're, we're, they're all around the same age. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where you're not like he's not Eminem's probably not listening to Shane Dawson's podcast for Christ's sakes. You know, but he's probably listening to, to Chris D'Elia and all that shit. And looking at the numbers that Spotify just released. Actually, I don't know if they released him. I think it was just in the meeting I was in with him. Right. Uh, what, whatever. I'll, I'll, I don't give a shit. I'll tell you. Um, 23% of listeners on Spotify, all of Spotify, are listening to podcasts only. It's really, and they, they said, look, by in three years, that number is going to double to where it's 50 50 on Spotify, people just listening to podcasts or listening to music. Mm-hmm. And I, I think a lot of celebrities and I think a lot of people listen to it. I also think. And I use this for, for me personally for writing, and I think Eminem does too, because he's a great writer, one of the very best, probably the best in rap, may, maybe of all time. He's the best writer there is, writes his own shit, and it is unbelievably clever and witty. The only way you can keep up a career like this for that long, because let's face it, Eminem's been doing this for 25 years at this point, is to, to keep listening to things or watching things that are current and keep you updated so kids are still buying your shit. So that's my guess on that. Yeah. I, I think they're all tapped in uh, more than we know, but it's always surprising. I, I remember my biggest surprise was uh, Mac Miller. Uh, Mac Miller used Marco Polio from FDR American Badass in one of his songs mm-hmm. one, and one of his things. And everybody hit me up and I was just, so I, I hit him up and I was like, Hey man, I did this movie and thanks. This is rad. You know, like, mm-hmm. and he, Sent me back a tweet and was just like, oh, man, I love that, whatever, blah, 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 and liked it. And I was like, I screenshotted it, you know, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe Mac Miller. And I was like, wait a minute, we're like the same kind of age and all that stuff. And I was like, that movie was cool and popular and on Netflix and, you know, mm-hmm. crushed on Netflix. And it's a big cult movie. And I was like, oh, man, is it dumb for me to assume that other like the people? Yeah, celebrities aren't, you know, big, famous people aren't just like watching shit like we are. Probably it's dumb, right? No, like I just feel like when you get to a certain level of fame, certain level of like being super busy, money, housewives, you know, wherever you're living or if you're up in the hill, if you're in the mansion or you're the thing, whatever, that your human experience and the way that you take in art or life is just different. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy to me that, you know, like Ellen does this her latest special is like relatable because it's like there's no way what, what, what is it i'm sorry i don't know her what that is. comedy special so ellen oh, did a oh, netflix oh, yes, special yes, yes, yes. called relatable yeah. and the whole beginning is all you know how people are saying she how could she be relatable or right, and right. that's the idea is that how without a younger person that has to go back to their apartment and live like a normal life mm-hmm. how would she be able to ingest 
you know, art or movies or podcasts or things in the same way because her, ex- you know, when you get to these George Clooney, whatever. It is George Clooney, if he listens to Chris D'Elia or Theo Vaughn, there's no way that he's having the same reaction, the same relatable, like the same, like, right, buddy? Yeah. As we are. Um, Do you know what I'm saying? So again, I, I think and the- you are so busy and they are, they are really, they're busy people. I don't know how much downtime of like whatever, but I think the common ground is comedy in, in this case. Um, in this case, I guess it is comedy. Because everybody is searching so for comedy answer. right now and just a good yeah. laugh. And I think that's why, you know, all these shows, you know, this, the show and Drinking Bros do well is everybody's searching for something light or funny or, you know, um, because there is no movies anymore. So I, I think in this case, in this particular case, yeah, man, more and more people are going online to look for comedy, something to laugh at because you, you're not watching movies anymore. And there's yeah. not many. There's not many really funny TV shows that are out right now where it's just like, yeah. uh, we were watching Pamela Adlon show last night, um, who we love. She's Great. brilliant and uh, always been hilarious from, you know, Californication all the way to Louie to her new show and all that stuff. But there's serious moments in it. Like the episode we watched last night was a, a full on drama. There was some funny shit in it. A little bit. But, but it felt it was, like a drama. Yeah. It's not a laugh out loud, you know. Peter, Peter Jeans type sitch and it's like all right cool man I, I do want to see that um and it's it's right like Broad City just went off the air yeah uh love that show before they got you know la- the, the last season was super political but this this final season was great yeah and you know they don't make too many shows like that right so that's just my guess that's my guess sorry James it is um and then the last story I want to talk about with you because this is for you. It's for the ladies. By the way, I'm, I'm, we should call Desi Light. I can get her on the show. Her movie comes out um, for uh, Comedy Central next week. And it's about women. It's, about, it's actually about what I'm about to talk about. Okay. Um, it, she went around the world, like literally the world, and uh, talked about women's rights and pay wages and all that stuff mm-hmm. in all these different countries all over the world. And they, they did a big special. And it's, a, it's a movie for Comedy Central, which they never really do. Uh, and I know Trevor Noah produced it. Um, so I'm amped to watch it. But what I find funny about this was like all of these things that you said about feminism were in this article about Denmark yesterday, how Denmark women are leading the world as the least feminist mm-hmm. and that they actually prefer it when men like whistle at them. They call it wolf whistle, which that's an aggressive whistle. Oh, geez. Yeah. I actually don't like that. No. But, um... Um, and they, they were they were like, look it's flattering. We like to go out of the house and have men look at us and, you know, do yeah. things and all this other shit. Yeah. And they they interviewed a bunch of these women and I, and, and I read it in this article and they were just like, man, I, I don't understand what's going Like we all, we have great jobs. Like the pay isn't that much different. Um, both w- men and women work over here and we're just trying to date and live normal lives. Like we don't really understand and do what they the big, understand big deal is. And the, the pay rate, uh, as as related to women where it's an overtime thing. So yes, if women do have uh children, family, they're going to be taken away from the workforce. You know what I mean? So it's overtime these numbers yeah. of the of the pay uh pay gap, which isn't real. But um yeah, I think it sounds like they sort of understand the whole gig, right? I think so. Uh, like just by reading it and hearing that complaining cause, cause about it, was, it, there was a bunch and, of interviews and all this stuff. And it was just like, you know, just normal girls who aren't affected by the bull. I, I think you just get so much bullshit fed to you here now in America with the media and these stupid fucking celebrities. I don't think they have that over there. So you don't have like Alyssa Milano's and shit like that mm-hmm. telling you all this dumb shit to get you riled up for nothing where it's just like, man, I don't, I don't get it. So like they, they just, all of them seem normal and they were just like, I don't see what the big deal is or whatever. And then I watched the trailer. Uh, Desi Lydic is a good friend of ours, has been for fucking 10 years. She's been in a bunch of movies. Um, and in this movie, in the trailer that, that was released online, the whole thing was her interviewing these women about women's rights, pay gaps, all that other thing. And like the funny thing about it was there's a part in the trailer where, where they were just like, 
she said, did you know that America's 48th in the world as far as like women's wages? And, and most of these women in other countries were like, oh, really? I thought it was worse. <laughs> but again, that sounds fine. Everything yeah. you hear and read. Yeah, you would. You would probably think that where you're just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You would think that, that we are worse. just like aren't able to drive. Basically, yeah, you think that we get sexually harassed at every fucking corner, every turn. We can't do anything <laughs> without. I mean, you would. That's what you would think. Yeah. You'd think that we are just oppressed constantly. Every time we go into work, we're just treated like shit. And, you know, in little ways. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right. I. It was refreshing to see like just normal women who because in this you know, in these interviews that they did for this story of all shapes, sizes, ages, everything. And these women who are just like, no, I don't really understand what the, the thing is. It's like, yeah, I, I do all this shit, get put makeup on, do my hair for men to look at me or to, to, to look pretty and to be noticed and, and all of that stuff. And it was just like, oh, there's some reality. We're back to a little bit of reality again. Mm -hmm. Cause guys do it too. Shit, man. Like, you know, I, obviously, the Summer of Swayze thing is, is more for, for you than it is for me. Clearly. But, um, uh, no, but it, it, for real, when we go out and you know shave, try to look nice, try to look presentable, throw some smolder aftershave on from straightrazors.com, try to smell nice, like, you know, that's what you want. Yeah. Where you're like, all right, great. Um, so I don't, I don't get the big deal about it. I don't. I don't either. Mm. But it was, again, it was cool to see and like surprising that somebody covered it and was just like, hey, yeah. man. Uh, Again, the only the only time for me that it's shitty is if it affects your place in like a company. If you don't do something with someone higher up. Right. And I think that used to be a lot worse than it is now. But like, we're fine. Yeah, we're fine now. You know, Jesse said everybody's fine, guys. So (laughs) good. Jesse Wiseman said that everybody's fine. (laughs) Everyone is fine. Uh, this is the point in the show we get to the revolutionary figure of the day, James. Shall we? We shall. Uh, this one's going to a fictional character, but I feel like he's real. Um, I'm going to give this up to, if you read the At Night She Cries While He Rides the Steed and When Darkness Falls, he doesn't catch it, or listen to the audiobooks, which are massive. There's a character of, uh, that plays one of my sons in this, and his name is Totally Fucking Mexico. And that's the actual character's name. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the 150th anniversary of the Golden Spike and the Transcontinental Railroad. I'm not going to give it away why that's special to me, mm-hmm. why it's revolutionary. You have to read the books for that. But I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it up to totally fucking Mexico, and I'm going to I'm going to give a big salute uh, to the men and women of Asia who worked on the Transcontinental Railroad. Let's face it, they built that railroad. You know. Yep. It was With a them. blatant disregard for anyone else <laughs> around them, I'm sure sleeping quarters, eating, all of this was very rough yeah. because it was just a... Promontory, Utah. Blinders Promontory. on. Yeah. They did it. Let's face it. Doggy dog. It, like, Still looking, to this day. Looking back on it 150 years later, of course they built the fucking railroad. They're better than us, man. Asians are better than us, man. And they they had are focused in a lot tunnel of... visions. Their living conditions during that that period were mm. were terrible. Work hard, super smart. Yeah, efficient. Uh, Head down, no talking. Mm-hmm. Eat a bowl of rice and move on about your day. And that's what they were doing. Yep. Built that thing and boom. Eighteen sixty nine. Right. <laughs> Full wheels, wheels up. Right. You know, they did it. Blatant disregard for anyone else around. They're you. throwing some huge party there. Where? I'm in uh, Promontory, Utah. Cool. I'm, 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 I'm sad we're missing it. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking good time, but there's a lot of history, museums, yeah. things like this. You ever been on a like an old school train like that? An old school train? Yeah. No. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. Like, I've been on the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Like I, it was an old old timey train in uh, mm. Chattanooga. I've been on. Mm-hmm. Blast. Love it. Gosh, Love a like good it. old train. Yeah, it sounds so fun. Uh, so fun. They were boozing, smoking on it, cigs inside back then. Right? Eh, it was rad. Ugh. It looked rad. You know, if you, could, if you could just let loose on a train, really rage, 
You know, now it's a bunch of dirty people on it. But mm -hmm. back in the day, you would be rich as shit to ride the train. They were raging their dicks off, man. The last time my mom went on a train. <laughs> so just for my mom rides the train a lot. So I have a little bit more insight into what it is like now. Yeah. So um, they the transitions were not working. So every time they would pass, they would have to pass where they were supposed to turn yep. back up. Yep. So this is at every turn. Back up. Yeah. Manually switch, then go the right. So that's the kind of stuff that's happening now. Yeah, but back in the day, Hitting you were cows. bombed out of your mind, you know, riding the train, getting your D sucked. Right. Fucking great. Right. Living their best life back then. You had a Windsor knot, you know, as a dude. You had a nice Windsor on, getting a beach. Sure. You know, probably drinking warm gin. Uh huh. Out of a, a brass cup, a copper cup. <sighs> yeah. Just really enjoying your life, being a man. Sure. Doing it. Doing it, doing it. Voting for, you know, for for freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should go. <laughs> On the rocks. Also want to give a shout out to Big Abe, Abe Lincoln. He was the one that was really driving that railroad oh stitch God. home. All right. You're welcome. Abe Lincoln. Look, you're okay. not only listening to a comedic podcast, but I'm also oh. educating you as well. Yeah. And you're welcome for, for my gifts and all of my knowledge, Japes, that I provide to this precious, precious world we live in before we all colonize on the fucking moon. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night. I'm just saying, they'll probably be available Good on the moon night. soon. This will be available on the moon soon. On the rocks, not gonna last. <laughs>